This is a brief guide to the Gaza Strip and an even briefer guide to Hamas. The Gaza Strip is a small, narrow territory, about 25 miles long, 3.7 to 7.5 miles across, that lies along the Mediterranean Sea, above the Sinai Peninsula, between Israel and Egypt. From Israel's War of Independence in 1948 to 1949, through 1967, the Gaza Strip was administered and controlled by Egypt. There was no Palestinian state there. Egypt didn't annex the territory, but they um, neither allowed the Gaza Strip to be run completely autonomously. From 1967's Six Day War, Israel acquired the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, and the Golan Heights, as well as the entire Sinai Peninsula. In 1979, Egypt had a brave, courageous, visionary leader, secular Anwar Sadat, who made peace with Israel and got everything back from that war that he wanted, the Sinai Peninsula, and not the Gaza Strip. So the Gaza Strip remained under the control of Israel. There was peace with Egypt, and for that peace, Anwar Sadat was killed by Islamic fundamentalists. In 1987, the first intifada began in December. It was a popular uprising against Israeli occupation. Shortly thereafter, Hamas was formed. Hamas is an Islamic militant fundamentalist group that rejects the existence of a Jewish state anywhere in the area where there had once been a Muslim controlled territory, a sovereign Muslim state. It's called Dar al-Islam, right? The Dira, the abode of Islam, and where the abode of Islam had been, there can never be anything other than, according to this interpretation of Islam, there can never be anything other than a sovereign Islamic state. And therefore, a sovereign Jewish state is anathema to Hamas. They have never recognized Israel's right to exist. They have never negotiated with Israel in good faith. And that explains why there was a war three days ago. Before we talk about the occasions and the cause for the war, I want to remind everybody that although the Intifada began in Gaza, Gaza has not been administered by Israel since 2005, when Prime Minister Ariel Sharon led Israel to unilaterally withdraw from Gaza. Arik Sharon, because of his credibility, in military matters, was able to successfully convince the people of Israel to uproot 21 Israeli, settle, Israeli settlements in the Gaza Strip and to pull out beginning in 2005. In 2006 of January, there was the one and only election Gaza has ever known. Hamas received more votes than the PLO faction, Fatah, and they were never able to agree on a power-sharing relationship. So 18 months later, there was a brief civil war where Hamas overcame the PLO, Fatah, and kicked them out of the Gaza Strip. That was in 2007. The Hamas leadership has been in control of Gaza since then. They have had millions and millions of dollars in international aid rather than build what could have been an incredible Palestinian island of peace and prosperity. They turned it into a war zone complete with underground tunnels and from which every two to three years they would lob missiles or use those tunnels to come up on the Israeli side of the border and terrorize the kibbutzim that are close to the border. When Israel has dealt with those 
periodic incursions, they call it mowing the lawn because they get rid of what is most visible, most salient, um, most irritating, right? Gaza and the Palestinians have never been an existential threat. It's always been something that Israel could put down with relative restraint. What happened beginning three days ago is different. It is the most sophisticated effort on the part of Hamas to go to war against Israel. They conducted operations by air, sea, and land. And mowing the lawn will no longer be Israel's response. They will need to uproot the sod. There may be several occasions for this war. Um, one occasion may have been the normalization with Saudi Arabia and the Palestinians didn't want to be left out as they were rumored to, um, as the Saudis were rumored to be ready to make a separate peace with Israel. Another occasion for the war might have been Israel's current government and the protests against the government. Another occasion for the war might have been the transferring of military hardware from the border of Gaza up to Jenin, to the West Bank, where there has recently been more military action. Another occasion for the war may have been Shabbat and Shemini Yatzeret. Many occasions, right, moments at which the war was engaged, but there's only one cause of the war. The cause of the war is Hamas's rejection of the existence of a Jewish state in what was once the Islamic, the Muslim Ummah, right, the Muslim lands. And the existence of a Jewish state is not something that we are willing to compromise on. And therefore, Israel's response will be disproportionate. I use the word disproportionate because the United Kingdom has said that Israel is allowed to use force for proportionate action. This will not be proportionate action. If someone punches you in the eye and you punch them back in the eye, there's nothing to prevent that person from punching you in the other eye. Israel cannot allow that to happen again. What happened in the past 72 hours cannot happen again. And so in this analogy, Israel will be forced not to punch the victim, the victimizer in the eye, but to amputate both of its hands. That will involve the kind of carnage that Israel has not had to engage in since its war of independence, if then. And the people of the United States who support Israel's existence will need to remember what this war is about and to not have our determination be undermined by the civilian casualties that will inevitably happen over the course of the offensive that Israel is about to launch. The Talmud says that when someone is coming to kill you, you should wake up earlier to kill them. This is a war of self-defense. This is a war for our existence. Am Yisrael Chai, the people of Israel, lives, and in order to do so, the kind of war that Israel has never wanted to fight has now been thrust upon it. We will stand by Israel and make sure that Israel has whatever support we can offer. And we will come together in solidarity, in prayer, and in the hopes of maintaining the strength and the perseverance to be able to, with good conscience, support what Israel needs to do in order to defend its very existence. The Kahila of Old York Road is having a prayer vigil and rally on Wednesday at 7 o'clock at KI. I look forward to seeing you all there.